The first post-debate poll confirms pretty much what I expected, that Donald Trump's toxic, overly aggressive demeanor turned off a lot of people because this poll shows that Biden got a really substantial post-debate boost. So this is according to CNBC and Change Research. They found that Biden is now leading Donald Trump nationally by 13 points. Now, if this poll actually represents a new general trend and isn't just an outlier, this is truly a substantial jump for Joe Biden. Now, according to Real Clear Politics polling averages, Biden is up nationally by about 7.2 points. And this has been a relatively consistent lead that he's had. But the last CNBC poll had Biden up by nine points. So that is a four point jump since roughly about, I want to say 10 days ago, mid-September. Now, towards the beginning of September, they found that Biden had a six-point lead over Donald Trump, which means that he made a three-point jump between the beginning of September and the middle of September. So the general trend here might not necessarily signify a jump because of the debate, since that was the trend according to these CNBC change research polls anyway. But it is reasonable to deduce that the debate is a contributing factor. Now, for more on this, we go to CNBC's Kevin Bruninger, who explains a CNBC change research poll conducted Tuesday night and Wednesday found 53% of likely voters nationwide said Biden did a better job in the debate compared with 29% for Trump. The poll also found 45% of those surveyed saying Trump performed worse than expectations, while 11% said the same for Biden. But just 2% of respondents said the debate changed their vote versus 98% who said it didn't. Another poll from CBS News Battleground Tracker gave Biden the edge in the debate, 48 to 41%, while 10% said it was a tie. A large majority of respondents in that poll, 69%, said they felt annoyed watching the debate. That poll had a margin of error of plus or minus 3.4 percentage points. An instant poll from CNN and SSRS with a higher margin of error of plus or minus 6.3 points showed 60% of respondents called calling Biden the victor and 28% saying Trump won the debate. So overall, it appears as if most people said that Joe Biden won the debate and as a result of his performance, he seems to be getting a little bit of a bump. Now, we do have to wait and see what other polls show as well because again, this poll could just be an outlier. So you don't necessarily want to base anything off of one particular poll, like you want to see aggregate polling data because when you average all of those numbers out, it gives us a better snapshot of what we're looking at here. Now, in spite of what the polls show, of course, Donald Trump thinks he won the debate um, and he didn't just like win the debate. He won the debate big based on a compilation of polls, according to him. And he says, thank you, of course, because he always takes things to like three to four levels above what they should be. So if he lost the debate, he's not just going to say I won the debate, but he may say something to the effect of I won the debate bigly and it was probably one of the best debate performances anyone has ever seen. Like, he always is so hyperbolic that I think that people aren't taking him as seriously, including his base, because you just, like, expect this. You expect him to be overly braggadocious, and nobody believes you. It's like the boy who cried wolf. If you say everything is, like, one of the greatest things in history or you're one of the greatest presidents in history over and over again, like, we're going to tune out. Like, you've got to say that, right? Uh, but if you're curious what polls he's referring to? Well, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany, she tweeted out these polls that show him winning by a lot. The problem with these polls is that these are not scientifically conducted polls. These are Twitter polls put out by C-SPAN and Telemundo. So it's not samples that are representative of eligible voters. So it's just going to tell us what the people who follow C-SPAN and Telemundo think, and who knows if these polls were brigaded by Trump supporters. So, I mean, you can you can use these polls for, like, an immediate reaction. I think they're useful to an extent. But in terms of, like, gauging overall where the race is, these are not very useful. But, I mean, I will say that whoever you believe won is largely subjective. I think if you're a Trump supporter, you're going to be thrilled with his performance. If you're a Joe Biden supporter, uh, you're going to think he did phenomenal. He stood up to a bully. But really, what we're looking at is what the normies think. The individuals who aren't necessarily on either side of, you know, our polarized political spectrum. It's hard to tell, but I think that Trump fatigue is a real thing that Trump isn't accounting for here um, because he's too narcissistic to think that. But I mean, we're at a time where the country is in shambles, right? 
an unprecedented collapse of the economy at the same time of a global pandemic and civil unrest across the country. Being overly Trumpian right now tells me that you're not able to read the room. Like, this was something that people found entertaining at a minimum in 2016, but in 2020, the mood is entirely different. People want an adult. And Trump, he at least needed to pretend as if he was a serious person and somewhat capable. And, you know, even if he was just like himself at the debate... I think that could have sufficed, but because he was so, he just played up the Trumpian character, if you want to call it a character, he was like overly Trumpish, I think that hurt him because we're all just sick and tired of this. Like even people who support Donald Trump have got to be at least somewhat irritated. Even the creator of Dilbert, who is a right wing Republican sycophant, he is a loyalist to his core seems to be a little bit turned off by Donald Trump because of the debate performance because he can't do simple things. He can't even condemn white supremacy. So when you vouch for someone and you put your credibility on the line for someone and they can't even do the bare minimum in terms of meeting expectations of what we want from a president and just condemning white supremacy, acting like a functioning adult for at least an hour and a half for the debate, it's going to turn people off. So if we don't see a more calm, cool, and collected Trump at that next debate, I think the same thing may happen. Now, the next debate is a town hall style debate, so maybe Trump's demeanor will be different because he's interacting with voters and not exclusively just Biden and a debate moderator who he believes is biased. So we'll see, but if he doesn't turn this around and uh, try to appear somewhat professional, even in his own way, in his own Trumpian way, He's going to lose. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?